All right, so we got the dual carbs off. We're done with the testing for them. And we got our single carb installed. And this is the one with the unequal runner. So this is the black aluminum one. And so you can see that the carburetor runner is shorter for the front cylinder and it's longer for the rear cylinder. So it's all set up. Now keep in mind, this is a single first gen carburetor. So it's one of the duals like this one right here. So it's set up exactly the same. I got 122s on the main jet and I got a 41 on the idle or the pilot circuit. And so we got everything set up the same. I've checked my fuel level in the bowl and we're all set up to run. So with two turns out, just like the dual carbs were set up, we ought to be able to test some things out for this carburetor. So we're gonna set up and we're gonna do a fact or fiction for a couple of things. So let's go over here and look at our fact or fiction board and see what we got. All right, so when we fire up this carburetor, and like I say, it's an equal carburetor to one of the duals. So it's the same carburetor, that way it eliminates any variable about the carburetor being like a more modern fancy carburetor versus the old carburetors. We're gonna check carburetor to carburetor the only thing that changes is the manifold. So, one of the things that I have heard is that number one here on our factor fiction, that the single carb can feed both cylinders since they don't fire at the same time. Well, we're gonna find that out to see if that one carburetor can feed both cylinders equally, because theoretically, if they're not pulling at the same time, that one carburetor could carry the load of both. So we'll be able to see that if when I fire it up, Everything settles in and it runs right. I got enough fuel, I got enough air, I got my baffles in there just like I had before, so everything's set up the same. We can also check and see if the manifold improves the low RPM torque. Theoretically, if it's not anything related to the carburetor changing, when I fire it up with an equal carburetor running one for the two, if the manifold is doing something spectacular, we're gonna see that this thing will fire up and we'll be able to check our torque and do all that. Now I speculate that it's not gonna happen that way because I just don't think that one carburetor can be tuned for both cylinders and I think air moves a lot easier than fuel does so most likely this thing's gonna run lean if it runs at all. So let's get set up over here. No changes to the carburetors, it's just like one of those duals and we're gonna see if this thing will fire up on a single carburetor with no modification. All right, so we got our single carb manifold installed and it's hooked up on the back. But before we put the carburetor on, we got to check and make sure we don't have any leaks. So what I'm going to do is actually pressurize this so I can look for bubbles and see what we got. So what we got set up here is my vacuum right down here and I got it switched around so instead of taking a vacuum it's going to blow on the exhaust. We're going to hook this end if it'll stay on there up into the carburetor like that and then this end I'm going to hold over here but I don't want to put it all the way on there because it'd be too much air so I'm just going to hold it against this edge right here and we're going to look for some bubbles. So let's get our bubbles ready we'll spray everything down and see if we can find any bubbles. Mm. Ah, yeah, so we still got a little bit of leak right here on this pipe that I gotta fix. So let me zoom in there and you can see it bubble. So now I wanna spray some stuff with bubbles right there where my leak was, and we turn this thing on, we will see. Mm -hmm. see that fitting is leaking so we're going to have to take that back off and seal that back up but it doesn't look like it's leaking anywhere else so we're in pretty good shape well all right let's get that sealed up and we'll be ready to install our carburetor and we can do some testing all right so to test our single carb with the factory jetting and i'm not going to lie to you i tried to start it up and it wouldn't start with the two turns out on the air fuel mix and then also without the choke 
And I ended up having to, if I can get it to stay running, you're gonna see if it stays running long enough that the air fuel ratio can cut on, it's really, really lean. So it's not gonna to wanna to run. I end up having to have the choke all the way over just to get it to try to stabilize enough to stay running and I got the idle turned up. But with the choke off, we'll turn our fuel back on and we can see because this is gonna discount a lot of these thoughts that that single carburetor can feed both cylinders because it just doesn't have the ability to put enough fuel out for how much air is getting sucked through there. So let's crank it up with the choke off and you'll hear it try to hit, but it isn't gonna start and stay running. So here we go. So you can hear it hit, it sucks a little bit in, but it just won't stay running. There's just not enough fuel. So let me put the choke all the way over and then I'll fire it up and you'll hear it get loud. So it runs for a little bit. We're not going to do that too long because we'll burn out our oxygen sensors running so lean. So as you can see from the air fuel when I tried to rev it up that back cylinder went so lean it just stopped running and you saw 22 so it wasn't even firing and then the front was trying to kick on but what that tells me is that the imbalance in the two cylinders is going to be really hard to control with this carburetor and a carburetor running stock jets just like the duals is not capable to run these cylinders rich enough because just to get it to run long enough I could get some measurements off of it I was having to have the choke all the way over so I'm feeding it a ton of extra fuel on the choke and I got the mix needle opened up to about six turns so it's not going to work that way we're going to have to rejet this carburetor to get enough fuel to get within range to keep this motor running in order to do some testing so back over to the board and let's see what we got for our factor fiction. All right, for just that sample test, having the air fuel gauges on there, we can see what it's doing. Factor fiction on the single carb can feed both cylinders since they don't fire at the same time. That turns out that is busted. That is a fiction. There's not enough fuel that that carburetor is going to be able to feed up, apparently, because it leans both cylinders out so bad that they can't even run, even with the choke all the way open, giving it all the extra fuel I can. And the problem is, air moves easier through the carburetor than fuel does, so that carburetor can suck a lot more air, but it can't get enough fuel up with those stock jets. All right, so that one's kind of busted. We're not feeding enough fuel because we got double the airflow and we just can't get fuel out. So number two down here, the manifold improves the low RPM torque. Well, that's busted as well because we're gonna to have to actually jet that carburetor to get it to work with the manifold. And because we're gonna jet the carburetor, we're gonna tune the carburetor and that is what's gonna give it more torque is because we're gonna give it more fuel. We gotta put more fuel in there for all the air that's running through there. That's changing the carburetor setup and that's what's changing that low end torque. And the reason why I can say that without any doubt is because on my bubber over here, I put air pods on it, but I left the dual carbs and I had to jet it bigger because I had so much air. Well, guess what? With that extra air pulling through and the carburetor jetted bigger, I got tons of bottom end torque on that bobber, but I'm running dual carbs. So it's not about the manifold that's giving you extra bottom end torque. It's the fact that you're gonna have to adjust the carburetor to compensate for the manifold. When you adjust the carburetor and you get more fuel coming through with bigger jets and things or a newer carburetor that's more efficient, that's what's going to give you the torque. 
So we busted both of those. Turns out both of those are fiction. So now what we're going to have to do is take our carburetor and we're going to have to rejet that to get enough fuel in so we can actually do the test and see if our manifolds are going to give us lean or rich on one or the other, any of that kind of stuff, if the vacuums are going to stay the same, what our exhaust temperature is going to be. So now we're going to take the carburetor back off and we're going to rejet that thing and see if we can get a reasonable amount of tuning so we can do our tests on there. But the good news is we didn't have any issues with our manifold vacuum. Both of those gauges came over just right and stayed steady. So we are pulling good vacuum on the single carb intake. Now we just got to figure out how to balance the fuel and the air to get the thing to roll. All right, so let's get set up. We're going to take the carb to the bench, put some new jets in it, and we'll have to do some testing to dial those jets in, and then we'll see if we can do some more testing.